إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, it was only as if it was a short while back that we were bidding farewell to the month of Ramadan. And today we are welcoming the month of Ramadan once again. A year has gone by. From one Ramadan to the next. And a year of your life has gone by. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is the very nature of this life in which we live. It's a cycle. One year comes and one year goes. And we are constantly in this never ending cycle that will one day soon come to an end. And this is how this dunya is. It was only yesterday that you're welcoming a newborn into this world. And today you're praying his janazah. It was only yesterday that you received your birth certificate. And today you're receiving your death certificate. Yesterday when you were born, you came into this dunya crying, while those around you were smiling and laughing. Tomorrow, the people around you will be crying as they're burying you into your grave. My dear brothers and sisters, as the month of Ramadan approaches and is on our doorstep, there are a few pointers that we need to keep in mind. A few pieces of advice that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit each and every single one of us. The first point is that the true believer, he looks forward, he longs for, he yearns for the coming of the month of Ramadan. He looks forward to it. He longs for it. Because he knows that it's an opportunity for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so just like businessmen, They don't make profit all at one time throughout the year. But rather, they look forward to certain seasons in which they look forward to making a lot of profit. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain times of the year to be profitable, to gain reward, to stack up those rewards, to invest in our akhirah. And so it is mentioned in an athar, Ramadan, ghunmun lil mu'min wa ghurmun ala al-fajir. That Ramadan 
is a profit for the believer, but it is a loss for the wicked. This is why the Salaf, they would make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months prior to the coming of the month of Ramadan, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them the opportunity to witness the month of Ramadan. Secondly, this year has been a tough one. This year that has gone by has taken with it many. There were those who were with us last Ramadan who are no longer with us today. And they are many. Whether they be friends, whether they be relatives, whether they be family, whether they be scholars, we all know of someone who was with us last Ramadan and they are not with us today. What does that teach us? It teaches us to take this month of Ramadan seriously. Why? Because if you were with us last Ramadan and you are with us this Ramadan, it may be that you won't be here next Ramadan. And so it's a time to take advantage of. It's not a time to waste. Many of us, we've gotten into the habit of spending hours upon hours behind that screen, behind our phones. It's time to put those phones down and spend hours behind the mushaf. Spend time in the masjid. If you are alive today, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to waste. If the masajid here are open this Ramadan for us, but yet they are closed for many in other parts of the world, it's a blessing for us that others have been deprived of. Don't let it go to waste. Don't say, I'm going to spend Ramadan at home this year, just like I did last year. If the masjid is open, then what excuse do you have? Come pray the daily salawat. Come pray salat al tarawih Thirdly, beware Beware of something very dangerous that has afflicted many Muslims today. This is something that we may say, you know what, it doesn't affect me. So it's not a big deal. But I'm sure each and every single one of us, we know of Muslims, whether they be family, relatives, friends, people we know who have fallen into this. And this is neglecting, neglecting fasting the month of Ramadan. Fasting the month of Ramadan is one of the pillars of Islam that the deen of Islam stands upon. And yet there are those Muslims who claim to be Muslims and yet they don't care about fasting this month. In a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ narrates a dream to his companions, certain scenes, certain horrible scenes that he saw in a dream, he told his companions that he was with these angels who were taking him from one place to another. He says, until I was at a mountain and I heard loud voices, and I asked, who are these? Or what are these voices? What are these sounds? And so the angels told him, this is the howling of the people of the hellfire. Then I was taken to a place where there were people who were hanging from their hamstrings with their mouths, with the corners of their mouths ripped and torn and dripping with blood. And so I asked, who are these? 
And so they said, these are a people who would break their fast, meaning in the month of Ramadan, before the proper time was to break the fast. Meaning that these people intentionally did not fast, intentionally broke their fast in the month of Ramadan. And so the scholars of Islam unanimously agree that anyone who abandons fasting the month of Ramadan, even if it be one day, without a legitimate excuse, then it is a major sin. Some of these scholars even doubted whether such people were Muslim or not. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin min kulli dambin wa khati'ah fastaghfiruhu innahu kana ghaffara wa tubu ilayhi innahu kana tawwaba الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وإخوانه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أثره واستن بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله وراقبوه في السر والنجوى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتمضوا النفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون My dear brothers and sisters The last point I wanted to share with all of you As we approach the month of Ramadan Is something very, very important, and that is the importance of learning and seeking knowledge of the rulings pertaining to the month of Ramadan, especially the rulings pertaining to fasting. And so when the Prophet ﷺ said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ That seeking knowledge is an obligation upon each and every single Muslim. What this means is seeking knowledge of that which will make our ibadah correct and valid. Otherwise, seeking knowledge is a virtue. Traveling to seek knowledge and spending years to seek knowledge and becoming a student of knowledge, that is a virtue that is not obligatory upon each and every single Muslim. But what is obligatory upon each and every single Muslim is to gain at least that much knowledge that will make our ibadah acceptable and valid in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so fasting is one of the pillars of Islam. Fasting is one of the pillars of Islam and it has certain rulings that are connected to it. That no Muslim who has reached the age of puberty and is sane has any excuse for being ignorant of these rulings. And so just like Salah has certain rulings attached to it, that are obligatory upon each and every single Muslim to be aware of. Likewise, fasting has certain rulings that each and every single Muslim must be aware of. But among these rulings that is of utmost importance is that which is related to what makes a fast valid and what breaks the fast. And so many, many ask, Concerning what breaks a fast. Does this break the fast? Does that break the fast? And so I want to leave us with three golden rules and three principles. If we were to understand these principles and memorize them, they will help us 
to resolve many questions that come to us during the month of Ramadan concerning what breaks the fast. The first of these principles is that nothing breaks the fast except that which has been mentioned by Allah or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so that which breaks the fast is among those things which are known as being matters of tawqifiyyah, that which is dependent upon either a verse in the Qur'an or a hadith, a statement of the Prophet So if anyone comes to you and says, this breaks the fast, and he doesn't quote for you an ayah or a hadith, then you have to ask him, what is the evidence from the Qur'an or from the sunnah, that this particular thing, it breaks a fast. The second principle is that your fast only breaks with three conditions. If you know that something breaks a fast, it doesn't break the fast except if three conditions, or if one of these three conditions are met. The first is that you do so while in a state of remembrance. Meaning, you don't break your fast forgetfully. So if you break your fast forgetfully, it doesn't break the fast. Your fast is still valid. The second condition is that you break your fast. You break it with knowledge. Meaning, you know that this thing, it breaks a fast. It's not based upon ignorance. If you break your fast not knowing that this thing breaks your fast, then your fast is still valid. And the third is that you break your fast willingly. Meaning that no one forced you to break your fast. If someone forces you to break your fast and you have no other choice, then your fast is still valid. The third principle, the third principle is concerning what enters into our body. And this is where many people get confused. And so we say that as long as something enters into your mouth or your nose and reaches your stomach, then it breaks your fast. Because these are the normal passageways to the stomach. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what you swallowed. As long as it enters through, through the mouth or through the nose, then it breaks your fast. But now how about things that enter your body through other than that normal passageway? This is where many people get confused. And we get question after question. Does this thing break the fast? Does that th thing break the fast? And these things are mostly medical related. And so things enter into, through the ear, things entering through the eyes, things entering through injections. The rule is that anything that enters through, to your body through other than the normal passageway, if it provides nourishment to your body, replacing food and drink, then it breaks the fast. But if it does not provide nourishment to the body, then it does not break the fast. And so based upon this, we understand that what many people are asking about these days, about the COVID vaccine, it is a vaccination and injection that does not provide nourishment to your body. Therefore, it does not break the fast. And so if you have an appointment during the month of Ramadan, you don't have to cancel it. The injection does not break the fast. As for those injections that do break the fast, then they are injections like IV injections, where the purpose of it is to give you nourishment, to replace food and drink that you cannot take. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give us knowledge of our deen, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach the month of Ramadan in a state of iman and in a state of good health. هذا وصلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على نبيكم محمد بن عبد الله
كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل في علاه فقال تعالى قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد ورضى اللهم عن خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وأن وعنا معهم برحمتك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم ارفع عنا الوباء والغلاء والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون